Mr. Rogers here, and today I'm just going to take you through a quick video on how to upgrade your Dell XPS 15 9500's SSD and RAM. Um, if you're like me, you don't like to overpay uh, Dell or any manufacturer for that part um, for RAM and SSD upgrades direct from them because oftentimes they overcharge. They've gotten a little better in recent years, um, but I still find that you know paying an extra $200 for um, more RAM when an entire kit of double the size and faster speed could cost me maybe $120, something like that. Um, you kind of get the point if you pay attention to these things. SSDs and RAM in particular at this moment, not always, are much cheaper to buy off the shelf um, from Amazon, wherever, and install yourselves. And it's really not that hard. Um, so I'm gonna take you through it. This will be a quick video and I hope you find it helpful. So first let's talk a little bit about the uh, parts that I chose to order and also kind of what my stock configuration from Dell was. So my XPS 15 came with a 512 gigabyte SSD and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now this is a fine amount of storage and RAM for most people. Um, so don't think that just because I'm upgrading to 32 gigabytes of RAM and adding a one terabyte SSD that you need to do the same. You really only need this if you need the storage and you really only need the RAM for things like video and photo editing. I'm going to edit this video on this XPS, which is what I usually use anyway. And I'm going to just sort of anecdotally see if having 32 gigabytes of RAM is a noticeable improvement for my workflow versus the normal 16 that I've been using. So just to talk about what parts I actually ordered for the RAM, we've got the Crucial Ballistics 3200 megahertz DDR4 RAM. It is a 32 gig kit, so two by 16 gigs. There's, it's CL16, so it's in timing for the RAM. The 3200 megahertz speed should probably clock down to 2933. So that's one thing I wanna test and see what speed I can get this RAM to run at. I believe that the XPS 15 caps out just under 3000 but I've also seen some reports that maybe you can get it to work at 3200. So we'll find that out. As for the SSD, what I have here is the ADATA, or ADATA, I'm never really sure how to say that, XPG SX8200 Pro. It's one terabyte of 3D NAND, um, NVMe, uh, Gen 3. And the thing that I liked about this is this particular model comes with a heat shield, heat sink. Um, so when we open up the XPS, we should see that there's a heat sink on the existing SSD module, but no spare heat sink for the other slot since I didn't order a second SSD from Dell. So I wanted to get one that had a heat sink on it. This one has really good reviews. Um, it cost me $139.99 off of Amazon. And for that matter, the RAM cost me $159.99. So just kind of adding these up, if I had done these upgrades through Dell, I would say lower performing parts would have actually cost me even more money However, I certainly understand if you want to maybe avoid opening up your computer because it's just something you're not comfortable with. Maybe this video will make you more comfortable with it, but certainly get why you might want to order directly from Dell. I'm just offering a way for you to save some money and also maybe get a little bit better performance than what Dell would give you. So first up, we need to get the case open. We'll flip it over and we'll check out what's going on down here. We have uh, Torx screws. It looks like eight of them, and they're probably going to be T4 or T5 torques. So let's take a look and figure out which one to use. I just have a computer uh, bit set that I got from Micro Center a, a long time ago, so one of these should work. Let's try actually T6. Looks like it might be right. It's a little too big, I think. Try T4. T4 seems to work. All right, so we're just gonna take these out quickly. So with the screws off, it is time to remove the back panel of the XPS case. I found the easiest way was to poke in from the front here, and then you can just kind of 
pry it off around the edges. And if you have a spudger, that helps. The first time, it's definitely one of the... Ow! I just cut myself. Cool. It is sharp, so be careful. And it is one of the harder cases that I've ever uh, opened, to be honest. There we go. Uh, quick break for Band-Aid. Okay, so we are back. Bandaged and ready to put this together. Let's take the um, back panel and just move it out of the way for now. And take a look at what we have actually here on the XPS. So spinning it around to get a more traditional view. But taking a look at what we have here, we have the one SSD that's pre-installed. And we have our RAM here, and we have our empty SSD slot here. I believe our Wi-Fi card is over here under those heat sinks. And you can see the cooling system for the XPS, along with obviously the battery here um, and the main motherboard. Uh, the CPU and GPU are up here with these heat pipes attached to them. So the first thing we want to do before we start getting in here and, and making our upgrades is disconnect the battery cable, which is right over here. It should be relatively easy. I'll, they usually put this little tab to help you pull it out. I say this. You can also use your fingernails. There we go. Okay. Some of this tape is a little weird. All right, so the battery is disconnected. We can now kind of get into making our upgrades. The first thing I'm gonna do is just add our SSD. So that is our XPG Pro here. You can see we get a heat sink um, to attach to it just with, you know, 3M tape and we get the XPG as well. Word of warning, you're going to need your own M.2 screw to put in here when attaching the SSD. Now installing an M.2 SSD is honestly the easiest thing in the world. I wish all SSDs were like this. Basically, you're just going to line up where the notch is, with where the notch is on your uh, motherboard connector. Go in at an angle until it's in, and then basically your screw just holds it down. So get your screw queued up. Um, unfortunately, where I cut myself makes it very tough to actually work with these. So yeah, when you're opening this up, opening the case up, please be careful. The edges are very sharp. Use your spudger tool. Don't be a goon like me. Once you get it going, then it's super easy. So that's connected. We want to attach our heat sink. Okay, just attach it on like so. It's happy. Now let's do the RAM. To release your RAM, usually you just have these tabs here on the side for the sodiums. And if you kind of just pop them out, your RAM will come out. You can see that the, the RAM that Dell used is SK Hynix. So again, you're just gonna kind of line it up with the way it's gonna go in. Pop it in, like so. And that's pretty much it. It's very simple to do. Just again at an angle, just like with the SSD, and then pop it down until it clamps in. You can see these little stickery heat shields are kind of getting in the way of the locking tabs. Um, but looks like they're fine. So we've made the upgrades we're gonna make. We're not done yet. Um, always remember to plug back in your battery, okay? Otherwise nothing is really gonna work. Thankfully plugging it back in is always a lot easier than unplugging it. So now that we've plugged the battery back in, we can attach the back case again and test this out. We're also gonna to need to format our SSD drive, otherwise it will not be recognized. One thing I'm gonna do um, before I put all of the screws back in is test that everything is working because I have often found a large waste of time by putting screws back in and then finding problems upon boot up. Cross your fingers for me. This is the typical alert message you're going to get uh, alert, the amount of system memory has changed. 
time of day not set, blah, blah, blah. Please run setup program. Just hit continue. We are back to our desktop here um, after completing that boot sequence. And if we go ahead and pop into File Explorer and go to this PC and properties, we can see we now have 32 gigabytes of RAM usable. All that we have to do to complete our setup is to format our disk drive. You want to right click on the start menu and go to disk management. You must initialize a disk. That's what we want. That's this new disk here with the one terabyte. We want a new simple volume. Just go through the wizard, pick all the best options for you anyways. Just click finish. It's going to format. Now that it's done, when you go into File Explorer, you can see that new drive with the 953 gigabytes available. So there you go. We have tripled our storage and we have also doubled our RAM in about 10 minutes. Don't forget to put the screws back in before you go and start to use your laptop. neighbors I hope you found this video helpful and I hope that you don't cut yourself like I did when you go ahead and uh, learn from my mistakes when you try this at home if you want some recommendations for other or similar upgrades go ahead and leave me a comment down in the section below and I'll be happy to look into it and answer it for you if you have any other questions about making an upgrade or change to your Dell XPS or even any similar kind of computer I'm happy to try to lend whatever assistance that I can do I'm by no means an expert but I enjoy this sort of thing and I, I've been doing it for a while. So it's something that I'm happy to maybe provide some help to somebody who's new to it or just wants a second opinion. So hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe if you want to catch my future content. This will probably be my last video with the Dell XPS 15 as far as reviews go. And I'm actually excited. I've got some new stuff coming in soon to do uh, a few more tech reviews for. So stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe if you want to catch that. And like I said, leave me a comment if you have questions or if you just appreciated this video in any way. All right, until next time.